In 1907, Haruprasad Shastri brought an old manuscript from the Darbar Library of Nepal. Then years later, he compiled and edited the contents of the manuscript and published them as Hajar Bachorid Purono Bangla Bhashai Bodho Gan O Doha. According to the history of India, particularly Eastern India, we know that during the 10th to the 12th century AD, Buddhism flourished in the Himalayan range, particularly in Tibet. The great master of Buddhism, Atish Dipankar of Golubongo, visited Tibet to preach Buddhism. From then onwards, the Himalayan range and Tibet was the abode of Tantric Buddhism, particularly the Shahojiya cult developed at that moment. We are in Bungyo Shahite Purishad at Calcutta. It's a treasure house of old manuscripts of Bengali literature, particularly for the medieval period of literature. Georgia lyrics, which were discovered by Haruprasha Shastri, was first published from here. On behalf of Bungyo Shahite Purishad, it was published in Bengali. Though doubt has been cast in some quarters, as to whether the linguistic character of Chaujapods is genuine Bengali, Dr. Shuniti Kumar Chattopadhyay, after a thorough examination of the linguistic character of these songs, has emphatically expressed his opinion that the language of the Chaujas is genuine vernacular of Bengali at its best. We know that Chaujapod is the early evidence of Bengali text. Now, let me ask, what the experts on Georgia lyrics? I think that it would be better to specify the linguistic feature of the Georgia songs as the earliest uh, specimens of proto-Bengali language. They should not be called uh, the earliest specimen of uh, Bengali or Hindi or Odia or Assamese and such. Regarding uh, topographical location of the Georgia songs. I should specify that the Georgia songs were very popular in the eastern part of India covering uh, the present day Bihar, Orissa, undivided Bengal and Assam. I think there should not be any controversy regarding the total number of uh, verses in the manuscript. Actually, the manuscript, some folios or pages are lost and the total number of lost verses is uh, three and a half. That is, total uh, uh, number of verses which are contained in the uh, manuscript uh, discovered by Sastri were 46 and a half. Later on, total complete version of the Tibetan text were found and through this Tibetan version, we could retrieve and recover all the texts which are 15 number. And through Tibetan version and also through um, uh, recently we have come across an information regarding a Mongolian version of this Georgia text. This manuscript contains a Mongolian version of the Georgia text and this manuscript has been preserved in Ulan Bator in Mongolia. There also we find 50 verses. Regarding the caption of the early Bengali text, there was a controversy as the original manuscript was under the caption of Chodja Chodju Binishchayo, this being the title found in the manuscript discovered in Nepal. Maha Mahopadhyay Vidushekar Bhattacharya, however, suggested that the correct caption should be Ashchodjo Chodja Chodju a collection of verses in a mystical pattern, which was found in the Sanskrit commentary of Muni Dotto on the opening verse. Dr. P.C. Bakchi has suggested another improvement on the title, which is Chodjas Chodju Binish Chayu. Dr. Shukumar Shen accepted the title as Chodja Pod, and according to him, the Chodja songs are believed to have been composed by some Buddhist tantrics exclusively. In his book, Origin and Development of the Bengali Language, Dr. Shuniti Kumar Chattopadhyay expressed his opinion that these specimens consist of 47 songs called Chorja Pods or Chorjas. 
composed by teachers, Shiddhos, of the Shahujya sect, which was an offshoot of the Tantric or late Mahayana Buddhism. Georgia lyrics are the manifestation of Buddhism. I will ask sir, uh, <coughs> please tell about uh, Buddhist philosophy uh, with reference to Mohajano and Hinojano cult. Buddha instructed orally in the absence of anything written from his part, his disciples after his passing away to the state of Mahapuri Nirvana, they met in different congregations in different places and times. And they disagreed and agreed on many points. Their, main, their root was in Buddhism. So then came two schools. One is Hinojano and the other is Mahajano. The name Hinojano was given by the Mahajanas of course, in a derogatory sense, because the Hinojana Buddhists, they tried to interpret Buddha's precept in a very strong manner and strict manner. They believed that everybody has to work his salvation from his own self and everybody has to reap his own actions strictly. And Buddha's precept, Atma Dipo Bhava, was interpreted by the Hinojanas in this manner. And they did not believe that any compassion or grace from the part of any preceptor like Buddha can save man and lead to the shore of Nirvana. According to Buddha, trading on the Marga Sutta, that is the right path, one can reach the shore of Nirvana after crossing the ocean of suffering. Such interpretation could not attract much people to the fold of Buddhism. Then came the Mahajanas and their name suggests that it is a great vehicle which can accommodate multitudes of people in the fold of Buddhism. And it happened actually like that. They said that yes, self-help and self-work is one of the foremost necessities for the attainment of salvation. But Buddha's compassion and grace can save the living beings from the shackles of suffering and bondage. This soft interpretation of Buddha's precept attracted millions of people to the fold of Buddhism, which is proved by the subsequent ages when Buddhism spread out in the different parts of the world. This spreading out of Buddha's precepts was done by the Mahajanas, soft and accommodative interpretation of the Buddha's precepts, that is Atma Dipo Bhava. Here he means, Atma Dipo Bhava means, you must be a lamp unto yourself, not for your own salvation only, but for the salvation of the whole human beings and living beings. As already hinted, the Chaujapods embody the religious tenets of Shahujiya Buddhism which was a later offshoot of Tantric Buddhism. In all probability, Bengal was outside the empire of Ashok, and Buddhism could have no access to this province during his reign in the 3rd century BC. Traces of Buddhism as a religious faith in Bengal are however found from the time of the Gupta emperors. A renowned Buddhist teacher of Bengal of the pre-Pal age was Shilabhadra of Shomotart. He was a friend as well as perceptor of Yuan San or Zuan San, who had a deep reverence for the monk. Coming to the time of the Pals, who were professed Buddhists, we find many Buddhist monasteries established in different parts of Bengal, mainly through the patronage of these Pal kings. In connection with the Buddhism of the Pal period, Mention must be made here of Atish Dipankar, the Buddhist scholar of Bengal. It is known that Adi Siddhacharya of the Chorjapod Luipad was his contemporary. There is no doubt that under the patronage of the Pal kings, Buddhism spread over Bengal 
and most of the Chodha lyrics were composed at this time. From Shashanko to Lakhon Shin, Bengal was under the Hindu rulers. But the political scenario of Bengal changed after 12th century. It was invaded by the Turkish rulers. Prior to that, this place, Gaur, was the cultural capital of Gaur Bongo or Bangladesh. Actually, during the 10th to 12th century AD, this Gaur was very much predominant for the Buddhist Shahojiya Bajrajan cult and it was a period of Georgia lyrics. During the Shen dynasties, though Sanskrit literature emerged and Bengali language was almost forbidden, the Buddhist Shahujiya Tantra sect monks were staying here. But after 12th century, right after the invasion of Turkey, all Buddhist Shahujiya monks somehow went to Tibet and then Nepal. It is known to us that the language of the Georgia lyrics are in mystical form. Sometimes it is called as uh, abstract and ambiguous language and uh, rather it is allegorical. So it is known as Sunda Bhasha or a twilight language. So I would ask sir uh, to explain uh, the Sunda Bhasha with some illustration from the textual reference of Georgia lyrics. <coughs> the religious sects uh particularly the uh, Shahojiya cult uh, express their own esoteric language uh, in a code form which is called Shondha but Shondha means twilight that is not clear as clear as daylight they try to uh, confine their religious messages uh, from the master to the disciple uh, from the disciple to another disciple they try to use a particular language which is uh, only clear to them and not outside the uh, pale of the religious six. As for example, uh, when uh, the songwriter says Sone uh, Bhariti Kuruna Navi, he may uh, try to give the message that uh, he was fully satisfied but uh, he has no space for other kinds of happiness. The boat is full of gold. That means the, the whole uh, uh, attainment has been uh, achieved uh, and there is no other space for uh, other types of achievements. So when you say that Sone Bharuti, Sone means gold, but that gold has got another meaning is not clear to common people outside the pale of the religious six. So in this way they tried to use code language so that their message did not go to go to the outside world and it should go from master to disciple, from disciple to another disciple, etc. So this is the uh, main uh, uh, mystery of the language. Because it is mystic because it is uh, expressed in a way which is only clear to the devotees and disciples of that particular community. Apart from the theological doctrines of the Georgia lyrics, we have a splendid flavor of the life and the socio-economic perspective of contemporary Bengal, particularly the wide vista of Aboriginal people like the Shabor, Pulinda, Dome and other communities who were oppressed by Brahmanism have been focused in the lyrical expression of the Georgia poets. These elements of the Georgia lyrics have become universal, emphasizing its outstanding literary worth. ऊंचा ऊंचा पावत तही बसई 
सवरी बाली मोरंगी पीछ पर सवरी गिवत गुंजरी माली उमत सवरू पागल शबरू माँ कर गुरी गुहारा तोहरी नीया घरणी नाबी सहज सुंदरी नाना तरुबर मोलिल रे गण कला गली डाली एक सवरी एवण हिंडई कर्ण कुंडल वज्रधारी तिधाउ खाट पड़ीला सवरो महासुहे से जी छाईली सवरो भुजंग रणी दारी पिम राति पोहाईली हियाता बोला महासुहे का पुर खाई सुन निरामणि कंठे लैया महासुहे राति पोहाई गुरु वाक पुंचवा विंधनी तामणी बाणी एक सर संधाणे बिंद बिंद परमणी बाणी उमत सबरु गरुआ रोषे गिरिबर सिहर संधि पैसंती सबरु लोरिव कैसे चौजापुर इज अ रिलीजियस एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ महाजनी टोंथ्रो बुद्ध सेक्ट व्हिच इज वेरी मच क्लोज टू द फोक रिलीजन सो इज देयर एनी फोक एलिमेंट in the lyrics of georgia pat certainly the lyrics of georgia pat are full of folk elements the lyrics are based on folk life naturally the poets take help of folk elements for example take some proverbs which are relevant in this age also apana mangshe horina vaidi that is the flesh of the antelope is her own enemy hathero kankano malu dapano that is to say the bracelet in your hand a mirror is no need barashuna gohali kitho duttha balande that is a bacon cow said is better than the wicked bull in a lady Lyric number nineteen. Kanna Pada presents a picture of marriage procession, which is connected with folk life. Baba ni baane parah maadala mon pavan bani karand kaushala jao jao dundhi shado uchaliya kanna dambi vivahe chaliya. there are some musical instruments in this lyric for example paraha that is dhak madal karanda that is dhol kashala that is karatal in a lyric of shabarapada lyric number 50 we find a custom of funeral rites chari bashe ta bhala re diya chanchali तो ही तोली सबड़ो डाह कयला कंदे सगुन शियाली लुक एट दैम्बू स्ट्रक्चर हियर इज अ लिस्ट ऑफ फोक मेटेरियल यूज इन दिरिक्स अफ चर्चापद हाड़ी पिटा घडुली दापन अदर्श तबला घंटा नोट पराह मदला करंड कसला कुठार तंगी पिहारी एटसेट्रा चौर्जा पौध्स आर रिलीजियस डिवोशनल सॉन्ग्स इन एवरी वर्स ऑफ द चौर्जा पौध इट हैज स्पेसिफिक रागस एंड द क्लासिकल ट्यून्स हैव बीन मेंशनड ऑन द टॉप ऑफ एवरी वर्स द डेवोटीज ऑफ द चौर्जा पौध्स यूज्ड टू प्रैक्टिस द सॉन्ग्स विद ब्यूटीफुल डांस रिसाइटल्स वी कैन से दैट द चौर्जा लिरिक्स 
are the rich musical inheritance of Indian classical music. The Chaudhya songs follow the pattern of Joydev. The name of the melody is always indicated at the top of each song. Investigations in the field of Indian music also supply us with important data with regard to the widespread popularity of Chaudhya songs. The metrical skill of Chaudhya Pod is Moraic. Most of the Chaudhya songs were composed in the pattern of 16 Moray. Out of this metrical pattern later developed the Tripodi and Poyar. Bendy, 
अमण चमण बेणी पेंडी बैठा का करू बर पंचविडाल चंचल चिये पैठो काल का करू बर पंचविडाल निसगम पम गम गम पनी दम प पानी सगर सनी दम गरी स सनी सा का तरू बर का 